Hi there, it's Rob from Arco Professional. I'm here today at Gear for Music and we're looking at the brand new update to the MPC series, update 2.6. This update brings a host of new features including the Ableton Live export and step and grid automation. Let's have a look. First, let's have a look at the Ableton export feature. This will allow me to take any of my MPC projects or the entirety of my MPC project and take it directly into Ableton Live and export it and open it as an ALS file, which means I can use it straight away inside of my project. To do that, it's extremely simple. Simply go to the folder icon at the bottom here, next to export, you'll see ALS export. And here there's a few different options. You can export it as audio, which means it will include all the built-in sounds and synths for MPC, or you can move it to MIDI, which means that I can keep the MIDI files I've created, but then use it with my own VSTs and AUs inside of Ableton. There's also a couple of other features here, which says include program volume and pan settings or bypass effects. That means I can make a really dry export of the, the sounds and not include the effects, which means I can use my own processing again within Ableton Live. At the bottom, you've got audio tail, bit depth, and sample rate, which can all be configured. And when you're ready, press export, choose your destination, and then export it to your SD, SSD, or memory stick. It's worth mentioning that if you're using drums or particular sections from the MPC drums or the MPC plugins, you can use the explode feature to have them on separate channels. To do that, go to the pen tool and you see explode, and that will then separate your drum track, for example, onto separate channels, and you can mix it individually inside of Ableton. The next big feature on 2.6 is the ability to step and grid automate effects, plugins, and CV and MIDI. To do that, it's really simple. You simply go to grid, if you can do it in grid, select velocity, and add new. And you can see here it says parameter. By selecting here, it will go into the next level where it says track or program. I want to automate the program. And you can see here that I've got my tube synth, which is my plugin. Now you can see all of the parameters within the plugin and I can choose to automate them in any way I wish to do so. And I can see here I've got my cutoff and now I grab my pen tool and I can draw in my own custom curve. So if I play that back, as you can see here, it's following the curve that I've just drawn. If you wish to do this in step mode, simply go to step sequence, select velocity, and then choose the program which I've just recorded or just automated. And you can see here that I've got it shown as a step sequence. And on the left, you've got your Q-Link encoders. So if I use my Q-Links, I can adjust each step separately. I can even use the encoder on the screen to increase or decrease the total volumes, or I can actually add a preset. So this is quite useful if I'm at the end of the bar and I wish to have a, a build up or a rise, I can just put that filter on or put that preset on and have a filter which goes up at the bottom of the bar. I can also press shift and clear certain parts of the bar or clear the entire automation. This can also be used on CV and MIDI, which I said earlier, which is extremely good when using modular or external MIDI equipment. Simply go to a MIDI or CV channel and then create a clip and go to grid or step and then automate it to whatever value or MIDI note you wish to. When using effects with automation, you can do that really easily now by simply going into the channel and adding a plugin. Let's go for a type and go to reverb. You can see I've got my parameters. But if I go back to the grid view, go to velocity, add new program, and you can see here I've got my air reverb. And I can choose any of the parameters from within that reverb and draw it in like I did before. With every brand new firmware update, there's a host of new workflow enhancements. On 2.6, there's been an update to the effect window. So if I go back into my inserts, select a new insert, you can see now they are sorted by type, which makes it much easier to select the process you wish to apply. For example, if I'm looking for my sidechain, I now have it in dynamics. I can scroll down and see the mother ducker and the mother ducker input. The touch user interface has been given a facelift and looks much cleaner and easier to navigate. Going back to effects, there's also been an update to the vintage effects such as the MPC 3000, MPC 60, 
if I select it and go to the pen tool, you can see there's a brand new custom touch user interface display. One of the last things to mention is the ability to now use submixes. So if you go to your menu, channel mixer, and then mixer at the top, and you now have eight custom submixes, which you can route effects to different parts of your project. So that was a really brief overview of the brand new features to MPC Live and MPC X. These new features allow a real integration factor with Ableton and allowing you to use the automation feature gives you a little bit more depth in terms of sound design and control, meaning that MPC has taken up another level in terms of the production workflows. For any more information on this or any other Akai product, head directly to the Gear for Music website. Thanks for watching.